Hi, I'm George. Uh, I'm with Endreams. We're here at E3 2015 showing off our virtual reality adventure game, The Assembly. George, what is The Assembly? This is, well, that is a question that we hear a lot. The Assembly is a collective of scientists who uh, love the pursuit of knowledge and love the pursuit of, of truth and are all about discovery for the sake of discovery, progress for the sake of progress. What they're not so fussed about is government oversight and even less fussed about society's morals. They might say that they operate in a morally gray area like the rest of our game. So what are some of the challenges when developing a game for VR? I guess some of the big challenges is that uh, a lot of the assumptions that you can normally make in regular video games just have immediately blown away. We're all used to playing games with a HUD uh, displaying elements, but everything that happens in VR has to have a location in 3D space. You can't just have uh, a health system or, or an item tracking system just plastered on the screen or, or even an inventory management system whereby you can bring up a second screen. It all, all, all needs to be very much more like real life. So we've had to put a lot of the, the signifiers into the world itself to guide people through the game. Additionally, um, uh, we've found that uh, stuff like uh, positional audio becomes a hell of a lot more important. Uh, but that also comes with its own uh, benefits as well. You know, now in VR, you can really uh, hear an object and, uh, or, for example, when a telephone is ringing, you can navigate towards that phone much more easily and much more naturally than you would in a regular video game. What is it about VR that's making it so popular, especially this year at E3? Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's really new. It's just the novelty. I think video games in general have, uh, they not necessarily reached a plateau, but, but you know, in terms of new mechanics that have been delivered to the player, I personally feel that it, you know, that I haven't seen anything that's really completely wowed me in years. Like, I mean, Portal, for example, big fan of Portal, you know, that introduced to a, to a ton of new mechanics. But I mean, I, I haven't, I, I haven't seen anything that would really like, you know, like for example, the first time anyone saw an RTS game, or the first time anyone saw a first-person shooter, or the first time anyone saw, you know, uh, an open-world game in 3D. There hasn't been that wow kind of oh my god, I didn't even know that video games could do this. VR brings that back in. It it, it makes everything so fresh and so relevant and so vital again. Uh, also, the fact is that. You know, you can be one minute in wherever you are, an office or your bedroom or your living room or what have you, and then you can put one of these devices on and you can genuinely feel like you're somewhere that you never even thought was possible for, whether it was, you know, a secret underground laboratory underneath the Nevada desert or in a spaceship in space or, you know, in a, in a mech fighting other mechs. And, and that sense of presence and immersion is so palpable that it's, it's very difficult to describe to people who haven't had a VR experience. A lot of the people I've spoken to think that VR is a lot like having a 100-foot cinema screen in front of your face. And that's not what VR is. It's more like having a 100, it's just, it's like having a 360 degree world around you that you can look at and interact with and, and get lost in. Uh, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's very exciting. It brings us closer to fulfilling that, uh, that sci-fi wish fulfillment dream that a lot of us had of, of cyberspace, as you read in Neuromancer or Snow Crash or Ready Player One. We're, we're a hair's breadth away from making that a reality now. What do you think it is about point and click adventure games that lend itself so well to VR? Well, adventure games, in my opinion, uh, lend themselves so well to VR because, uh, much like real life, uh, you are interacting with the world in a very naturalistic way, at a slow pace, uh, at, a, at a pace that feels familiar and comfortable. You're not being asked to do too much simultaneously or at too, uh, uh, too high frequency a pace, if that's a word. High velocity a pace, figure it out. Um, so, for example, um, uh, you know, when you move through the world, um, you uh, normally are interacting with people and objects, much like an adventure game. Virtual reality is called virtual reality because it's so close to actual reality. It's not often that you find yourself needing to throw a grenade, have precision aiming, duck behind cover or any of that. Um, and that gentle pace uh, where you're, it's mostly about observation and uh, engaging narrative and interesting characters that you, that you want to find out more about, um, that's much closer to, to real life and it really it really come, comes alive in, in VR. You know, you can, you can present something as basic as looking in a mug, just looking in a cup. In a regular video game, you'd be like, whatever, I'm looking inside a cup. In VR, it, it becomes a wow moment. You're like, oh my, wow, I can see this thing in front of my face and it looks real and it, it, it's very, it, you, it is generally one of those experiences where you have to try it in order to realize just how, just to get the wow factor behind it. 
when is your game coming out? Uh, so we are aiming to be a launch title for HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, and Sony Project Morpheus. So whenever those headsets launch, we're going to be ready. HTC, uh, Valve has said that SteamVR should be available before the end of this year, and that's what we're aiming for.